Good afternoon, everyone. Respected founder and president of ASBM University, Professor Biswajit Patnaik, Honorable Chief Guest, Mr. S. V. Nathan, Partner and Chief Talent Officer at the Lord India. Guest of Honor, Professor Jason Pandyawood, Dean Faculty of Arts and Social Science at University of Nottingham, and Professor L. B. Anand Karyan, Professor at Management Development Institute, Singapore. Vice Chancellor, Professor Kalan Shankar Ray, Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Falgun Niranjana, Assistant Dean, Academics, Professor Saroj Kumar Bisai, Invited Guest, Faculty Members, and Dear Colleagues. This is Dipti Pandey, a student of BBA Honors second year at ASBM University. We are all excited and extremely happy to welcome our new friends, the student of batch 2021 and 22. On this joyous occasion, I request our Honorable President, Professor Biswajit Patnaik, and our Vice Chancellor, Professor Kalan Shankarre, to light the lamp of wisdom. It is most unfortunate that we are unable to have our esteemed guests with us physically because of the pandemic. So I pray for their blessings and good wishes. Now, I request our Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Falgun Niranjana, to introduce to the dignitaries. Please, ma'am. Uh, very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm sorry because of some kind of uh, technology problem, I'm not able to switch on my video. Uh, Esteemed President, Chief Guest, Guest of Honor, Vice Chancellor of the University, my colleagues in academics and administration, and my dear students, I feel privileged to introduce to you our esteemed guests who have achieved excellence in their respective fields. We feel delighted that the Chief Guest on this event is Mr. S. V. Nathan. Mr. Nathan is the Partner and Chief Talent Officer at Deloitte India. He is a member of the India Leadership Team and serves on the Talent Executive Leadership of the Asia Pacific region. An alumnus of XLRI Jamsetpur, he has over 30 years of professional experience in the field of human resource management across diverse industries, including manufacturing, services, telecom, and IT. He is currently the president of National HRT Network, an organization of leading HR professionals of the country with more than 30 chapters in India. We have today with us as guest of honor, Dr. Jason Pandya Wood and Professor Alvi Anand Kurian. Professor Pandya, uh, Professor Pandya Wood is the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences in the University of Nottingham, Malaysia. Earlier, he was Director of External Engagement and Strategic Partnership at Nottingham Trent University, UK. His research interests are in the broad discipline of social research and evaluation and impactful and participatory research projects that link theory policy and practice 
we heartily welcome dr jason to our midst today dr albi anand kurian is a professor in management development institute singapore a practice a marketing practitioner and theorist he has been featured among 30 marketing people in the world he has been trained in advertising in new york and he had founded emphasis emphasis had conceived and executed advertising work for multinational majors such as procter and gamble unilever and nestle and for products such as lays ariel and coca cola professor kurian's concept conflict as a marketing tool was published by knowledge at the rate wharton and republished by the wharton center for leadership and change management thank you professor kurian for being with us today the founder and president of our university professor patnaik is an internationally acclaimed expert in the domain of human resource management and is a well known management guru with an enriching career spanning over 3 decades he has held rewarding positions like professors of iim indore and iim lucknow director of iibm guwahati which is an institution of reserve bank of india and he was also the group hrd head of sr group etc professor patnaik has to his credit 104 research publications in national and international referred journals and 26 books he currently heads reason 10 which constitutes the south asian countries of accreditation council of for business schools and programs usa professor patnaik has been conferred with numerous national and international awards like acpsp usa's prestigious teaching excellence international award our vice chancellor professor kalyan shankar rai has long and rich experience in both academics and industry a decade and half in teaching and academic administration and more than 3 decades in a nationalized bank handling both operations and management he has several papers to his credit along with nine books on management and related subjects he was also associated with nibm in preparing the guidelines for service area approach of reserve bank of india here with this i come to the end of my part thank you very very much over to you dipti thank you ma'am it is said that a great welcome makes a merry feast so i request our respected vice chancellor professor kalyan shankare to deliver the welcome address please sir thank you dipti mr president sir our esteemed chief guest mr sb nathan our respected guests of honor professor albi anand kurian professor jason pandya wood pro vice chancellor professor falgun niranjana assistant dean academics professor saroj kumar bishe my faculty colleagues invited guests and students i welcome you all on this mellow autumn day to the inauguration of the 2021-22 batch of asmm university this is the third batch of the university however if we think of asbm from where asian school of business management from where asbm university emanated this would be the 16th batch we have today with us as our esteemed chief guest mr sb nathan an industry leader mentor and an advocate of ethical leadership he loves developing future leaders through coaching i welcome you we have with us two eminent academicians professor albi anand kurian and professor jason pandya wood from two very prominent institutions of higher learning one in singapore the other in malaysia we welcome you sir we have with us our president professor biswajit patnaik an international acclaimed hr expert and an institution builder i welcome i also welcome the invited guest the faculty colleagues and the existing students of asp coming to the new students who are joining today uh, before i welcome them i would like to throw some statistics at them because as students of higher learning they have to get acquainted with numbers and numbers play a very important role in life a survey by aishe all india survey on higher education says that the gross enrollment rate gross enrollment ratio ger in higher education in india was 27.4% for 2017 18 26.3% for 2018 19 that means it went down from uh, in 2018 19 
and it has become 27.1% in 2019-20. That's the latest data. So it has improved, but it's still below 2017-18. What it means is that out of the total population in the age group of 18-23 in India, that means the population which is eligible for higher education, 27.1% attend college and university. So you, the students, are lucky to be one of the one fourth of the Indian population. Now let's look at it from another point of view. The total enrollment in higher education in 2019-20 stood at 38.5 million. It was 37.54 million in 2018-19 and 28.56 million in 2017-18. So number wise, we are increasing. Yes, but percentage wise, the age group uh, of 1823, the enrollment has gone down. Now, an interesting welcome feature is that girls constitute 49% of the total enrollment in 2019-20, which was 48.6% in 2018-19 and 44.4% the previous year, 2017-18. Thus, the enrollment of girls is increasing day by day and I'll be very happy if after three, four years, the number of girls in higher education uh, is more than the number of boys. In fact, if we take ASBM as a small sample, I can say that during the last 15 years, except for a year or two, all the years, the academic gold medal has gone to the girls. Anyway, coming back to the figures, the total enrollment in higher education has been 38.5 million. If we compare that with the total population of 138 crores, we find that 2.79% of Indian population get enrolled into higher education. I repeat, only 2.79%, a minuscule 2.79% of Indian population get the opportunity to join higher education. And you, the students of higher education, you, the students of ASBM, are part of that. This you should try to appreciate with all gratitude. Coming to another figure, as of 2020, India has over 1,000 universities for 138 crore population, which means 13,80,000 population per university. And you are one of that, 13,80,000. So that way also, you should consider yourself to be fortunate. Now coming back today, it's a day of reminiscence for uh, all of us at ASBM. I remember the day when the first batch of students joined ASEAN School of Business Management. It was on 16th August 2006, 2006, 15 years back. There was a very heavy downpour that day. It was unusually heavy rains we had that day. And it was, as we say, raining cats and dogs. Maybe it was a downpour of blessings from the heavens. Today, uh, we don't have any rain here till now. But when I look, at, uh, look outside the sky, I find that the sky is overcast with dark and cloud. Maybe there will be a downpour of blessings. Let's hope for that. Why I said is that over the years, from 2006 onwards, I do not know, but uh, we have seen that every year on the day the students join, we have uh, rain. Maybe heavy, maybe a drop or two, but we have rains. And we take it as blessings on the new students. At this juncture, I joined the ASBM family in fondly welcoming our new members, the students of 2021-22 batch. University education opens up myriads of possibilities and I welcome our new students to the elephant of possibilities here at ASBM. And ASBM family prays for a meaningful life for them in future. And today I would like to advise our new students to remember their parents at this moment. This is a very, very meaningful moment for them, very, very important moment for them. They should remember their parents. They should appreciate the sacrifice that the parents have made for them. They should appreciate the contribution that the parents have made for them to be what they are today, to join university education and to remain ever grateful to them in life and seek their blessings. With this, I welcome all of you again and thank you very much. Dipti. Thank you so much, sir. 
now before moving ahead i would like to tell you all that the whole event is live streaming on youtube moving forward now i would like to request our esteemed guest of honor professor jason pandya would to illuminate us with his speech please sir many thanks good afternoon president vice president vice chancellor and of course the students joining us today as we embark on this important journey thank you so much vice chancellor for sharing those fascinating insights i also learned that if i was to come to the physical inauguration ceremony in person i should always always pack an umbrella um listen it gives me great pleasure to be with you this afternoon and i thank you for the kind invitation to attend this auspicious occasion i'm extremely proud and pleased of the relationship we have with ASBM and i admire the incredible impact that they have on the lives of their students so it's an especial honor a personal honor for me to be with you today thank you now to those joining us to those embarking on this big step congratulations uh sometimes we save our congratulations for graduation days but you know what you've got through the first of the big challenges that are to come you're embarking on an exciting new chapter in your life a big journey um which is going to require all that resilience and all that great skill that has got you to the point where you are today for many of you it will be a big step some will be finishing school joining university for the first time means meeting new people making new friendships learning to learn in a very different way now if everybody will forgive me i'm a massive star wars fan now some of you may never have heard of star wars i'm sure that's not true but there is one character in star wars who always sticks out for me and that's yoda he's a little green guy he's very wise and when he's training luke skywalker he says to him you must unlearn what you have learned and what yoda means by that is not disregarding all of the things that you have in your past but i often think in in kind of um comparison to joining university you must be open to new things you must kind of uh be ready to sort of take on the challenges of being an independent learner and all that that brings so it's an exciting time for sure but it can also be quite daunting what i'd like you all to do is to sort of think back and reflect on all of those things that have helped you to get you to where you are today so what were the skills that you had the the study uh, strategies you used who were the people that you talked to the vice chancellor mentioned the important role your parents play uh, your friends may be playing important roles as well who can you draw on who can you talk to when and if things do uh, become quite tough i'd really encourage you to think about the strategies that would support you in studying but also to recognize you're part of a learning community so this isn't just about you it's about all the peers that are in the room with you today so this is a chance for you to share your knowledge your experience your tips and your ideas with uh, your peers and i would strongly encourage you to do that listen my big tip is really easy to kind of sum up you get out what you put in so if you participate in lectures if you come along to lively debates and seminars and uh, other learning events you're going to get lots out of it if you engage with your professors with the lecturers with the tutors you ask questions you do the reading it's going to be a fantastic experience for you um i always say to my students you know what read a bit talk a lot about what you've read then read some more and then talk about what you read again treat reading and learning as something that's alive that it's a chance for you to share your ideas and learn from other people and gain perspectives uh, from them so if you keep yoda in your mind he would encourage you to expose yourself to new ideas challenge the things that you've previously held to be absolute and open yourself up to a whole range of different perspectives because this is that one time trust me from an old academic where you get to do this uh almost um as free as you will ever be able to but listen don't forget to have fun as well here's a chance for you to make new friendships that will last a lifetime uh if i was brave enough right now i would share my screen and on that screen you would see a picture of me in my first week at university 
and that was quite a long time ago. But in that photo, you'll see me on the back row and uh, rows of other people uh, on that course that I was on. I'm proud to say that in that group, about 50% of those people remain really important friends and colleagues to me to this day. And there've been moments throughout my life after my studies where I've had to draw on their wisdom, where I've had to draw on their advice and their perspectives to help me through certain questions or challenges I've had in my life. So when you come into this university class, I want you to look around the room at the people who are with you, either in teams, uh, MS teams virtually, or when you're actually physically back on campus, because those are the people who are gonna become really important allies in your journey through life. They will become your social network, your little black book, your LinkedIn uh, network. Okay, I'm just going to end by saying, look, it will always be my belief that education is the primary force for good in the world. Okay, uh, this is something I'm not going to negotiate on. It is the silver bullet for every big pressing health, social, moral, political, economic challenge we face. And folks, you are coming to university at a time when we are going to have to draw on all the resources we can to understand what the world looks like in the future. So I'm looking at a room today, I can't see you in person, but I'm looking at a room today where these are the future leaders, the future thinkers, the future directors, the future uh, managers, the future people I'll read about in newspapers and catch on CNN, um, talking about particular issues. So be the best you can, make the most of it and get the most out of it that you can. Education is the thing that's going to fix the next big challenge, and you're part of that journey now. So uh, to all of those involved in today, thank you very much indeed for organising this event. Thank you again for inviting me to be part of it, and I really, really look forward to seeing the progress of these students, and more than that, I really look forward to coming visit ASBN at the earliest opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your kind deliberation. Now, I request our respected guest of honor, Professor Albi Anand Karyan, to enlighten us with his talk. Please, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dipti. Uh, Professor Biswajit, uh, the Vice Chancellor, respected members of the university, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, last but not the least, my dearest, dearest students, because students all over the world are my students. They're our students. We share all of you as our students and our best wishes and our welcome is always with you wherever you are. So uh, taking off from Jason's words, I'm not sure if I can uh, be as wise as Yoda Maybe I'm as old as Yoda, but uh, uh, I thought I would share some uh, little insights for you. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I hope you'll be able to see it. Uh, here we are. Everybody can see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, thank you, Dipti. Uh, I had done uh, a lecture in China for what's next for China, and I've done a lecture in on what's next for India. So uh, I thought it would be absolutely appropriate uh, to try to figure out, to try to guess, to try to force, you know, do a forecast about what's next for you. Because I know that you are sitting there, uh, you're just embarking on your journey and you're beginning to wonder what's going to come, what's next really for you. So my talk is really divided into three parts. Part one, says the world has never been better than it is now, which is a bit of a surprise, I know. Part two says what you can learn from Singapore, because Singapore I know well, I work here, and uh, to, in some ways Singapore has some things to offer to the world. And perhaps the most important part, uh, which is part three, what you and the world can learn from India. OK, so let me go to the surprising news first. Uh, the good news is that the world has never been better than it is today. 
Now, I know that this is going to surprise you tremendously because uh, when you watch news, when you watch, when you open your telephone, when you look at, uh, you know, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, you are flooded with terrible news, terrible news from all over the world. Now, this is not the fault of the media. It is just that the media has that perspective and they're not really to blame for that. Uh, let me give you an example. If the media was to tell you that 100,000 flights took off today and landed safely, and if they told you the same thing every day, you would say, why are they telling us this? I mean, this is boring news. So good news is not necessarily news. Just one flight, one flight somewhere in the world has to crash. And it will be in your phone in, in the span of 20 minutes. And that is news. So that is just a media perspective. Uh, they're not to blame for this. It's just that good news is not really news. So that's something that we have to keep in mind. So what are really the facts of the world as it is today? And for this, I'm going to a wonderful study done at Harvard by a psychologist called Steven Pinker. And Steven Pinker was very rational. He said, I won't go by what the media is telling me. I won't go by what people feel. I will go by the facts. Let's look at the world as it is today and compare it to the world as it was before. So first he said, OK, let's look at the number of wars that are taking place. So the number of wars and the number of people being killed in those wars has drastically gone down. Let's look at the crime rates all over the world. Crime rates in Singapore are almost non-existent, but not just Singapore, everywhere around the world, crime rates have almost, have definitely declined. Nobody's saying they are low, but they've definitely declined. There's less violence today all over the world towards children, animals, minorities, violence in all its forms is reduced. Similarly, poverty is definitely down. We are not saying that uh, poverty has been eliminated. Steven Pinker is not saying that, but he's saying that today it is far better than ever before. So incomes are up. Incomes are up not just in rich countries. They're up all over the world. And as a reflection of that, life expectancy is up. People are living longer and they are definitely uh, diseases are on the back foot. Now, you may think that, hey, this we are living through a pandemic. We're all, you know, uh, uh, you know, seem to be in such a bad shape. But we are not in a bad shape when you compare it to the pandemics of the past. We are still uh, be able to have an inauguration of this batch because we have the internet. We are still surviving, most of us, and we are still far, far, far better during this pandemic than we ever were in earlier pandemics. Now I want to come specifically to India. Is there good news for India? Again, I'm taking a slightly theoretical perspective. John Nesbitt wrote in The Global Paradox, that a global economy is best for smaller economies and smaller companies. Now, that sounds a little puzzling because you, you would think that in a global economy, it's big countries, rich countries that will benefit. But that's simply not true. The countries that have benefited most from the global economy has, have been countries like China, countries like India, countries like Brazil, countries like uh, South Africa. And similarly, if you look at the companies that have benefited from globalization, I would say that the company that has probably benefited uh, tremendously is Apple. But Apple was a small company that started out, that was started out by two college students just like you in a garage. So two college students starting out in a garage can benefit from the global economy and take their a uh, company into a massive size. Similarly, if you look at Samsung, Samsung was a small company earlier. Today, it's a giant. All these companies have benefited from the uh, global economy. And I'm hoping that the next big giant will come from 
India and it will come from your class. It will be college students like you who will probably begin in a small garage or maybe even in your hostel room like uh, the way Google started and then you will take over the world. So this is tremendously good news for you. It's good news for you personally, whether you're going to be an entrepreneur or whether you're going to work for a giant corporation. Now let me come to Singapore. I I know Singapore fairly well, and I know that there are some learnings I think that will benefit nearly everybody. One of the things that really struck me about Singapore is how much in advance they plan. We were doing a water project. Uh, we were doing a water project, and we met the government in that respect and in that regard, and. When we were talking to them, it, it, it slipped out very casually. They weren't boasting about it. They said that they were planning for the water requirements of Singapore for 2080. That means Singapore plans almost 60 years in advance. Now, that kind of future planning, I, I'm not even sure if any other country does it. And definitely that's one of the reasons why Singapore is doing well. So I would like to urge you to think of long term planning, not just for countries, not just for corporations, but for you as well. When you are thinking and working out your life plans, yes, you need to think well in advance. Number two is it's OK to plan. It's wonderful to plan, but you have to execute those plans. And that execution has to be as flawless, as meticulous as possible. You're going to make mistakes. Of course, you're going to make mistakes, but that's perfectly OK. But you have to learn from those mistakes and move on. Uh, <laughs> let me give you an example of the kind of execution that I see in Singapore. And this is a very, very, this is a very, very uh, granular, very, very micro example that I'm giving you. I'm a bit of a workaholic and I quite often leave work at something like 10 p.m. So the cleaners come after 10 p.m. and they're cleaning up the room. And one day, not just one day, I've observed them several days like this. After they clean, they take photographs on their mobile phone of the room they have cleaned. They even take a photograph of the waste paper bin that they've emptied. All this is on the record. And all this is being monitored by their supervisor. Look at, so it's not just that Singapore plans, but it's also that it's carrying out those plans, you know, with meticulous attention to all the little details. I'm not saying this is easy, but this is probably what we all need to do. The other aspect that I find incredibly uh, enriching about Singapore is that it draws from individual strengths. Uh, there are various communities here in Singapore. There's Chinese, there's Malay, there's Indian, there are Westerners. And each one of them brings a different set of strengths, different skill set. And Singapore benefits from these different skill sets. There's a certain electricity when you have people from all over the world here with you there's a certain a sense of even healthy competition and that gives a certain uh, zest to everything that you do and it gives uh, a lot of uh, things get done faster quicker better because there is diversity in the workplace and of course now we come to incredible india what can India teach you and the world? There's so much. Western science looked at the world outside. India really looked at the world inside us. And it came to the same conclusions. Indians understand things and grasp things so quickly. Wherever I go, I find that Indians are much faster in their appreciation, understanding of new ideas, etc. We can adapt, we can innovate. We can change course. We can uh, adapt to changing situations much, much faster than anybody. Wherever you go in the world, you carry the India advantage within you. 
And that's something that is of tremendous value within, within and inside you. Everything that you've imbibed from your parents, your family, your college, and now you will imbibe from ASBM. So in conclusion, today when you are just about to go to bed, I would like you to look out of your window. But when you look out of your window, I don't want you to see the building that you live in. I don't want you to see the neighborhood that you live in. I don't want even you to see the city or the country that you live in. I want you to see the whole world outside your window. That whole world is where you belong. That whole world is your workplace. That whole world is yours to conquer. And it is ASBM that will guide you. ASBM and this university and your professors and your teachers who will guide you through this world. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for your valuable words. May I now request our esteemed chief guest, Mr. S. V. Nathan, to edify us with his speech. Please, sir. Hi, good afternoon to all of you. What a pleasure. It's just my privilege listening to uh, a very, very wonderful story I heard. And um, always a pleasure to be with Professor Biswaji Patnak, who I've known for many, many years. And um, um, you know when 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 people speak, all you have to do is just listen and get lost in what they say. So our esteemed speaker just before this, the the way that he left us mesmerized with the kind of thoughts that the world is your canvas. It, it gets me to be in a position where it's very difficult to speak. So, uh, Dr. Curran, so thank you so much. It's a pleasure listening to you, sir. Um, I always feel that uh, if you are coming in third, it's always a disadvantage. And it's almost like, um, how do you put it? So it's like there is a major uh, who is addressing his troops, or rather he's got his troops in front of him, and suddenly what happens is we have from somewhere a general passes by. When a general comes in, then everybody is now focused on the general. And so the general makes a very passionate speech, and it is so rich that the major now is fumbling for words. And then he has to get the attention back from everybody. And so after the general leaves, he tells the troops, hey, soldiers, the general has made some general points. The major will now make some major points. Uh, I'm not here to even tell you any of the major points. I'm not even qualified to be a a major, so I will say I'm just but a lieutenant. Um, the only thing that I know is to share stories with you. And uh, you might ask me, so the Lord pays you a lot of money for this? Yes. Sometimes you, you do find people make this kind of mistakes. So I'm going to speak to you about two things. One, diamonds. I'm sitting here in Hyderabad. My workplace is Bombay. And um, just from my house, if I look a little yonder, I can see the Golconda Fort. Now, Golconda is very famous world over. The one thing that's most famous for is that it had mined the Kohinoor diamond. And uh, it's, a, it's something that all of us are very proud of. Unfortunately, it's not in India anymore. Uh, when I came into Hyderabad almost 17 years ago, I had a buddy and his only job was to take me around Hyderabad and, and tell me the places. Now, coming from a place like Bangalore, I thought, well, I thought Hyderabad was a poor cousin. I was fascinated with a number of things. He said, you must go to Salar Jung Museum. 
And I'm not a person who goes to museums. But he insisted, and he says, when you go there, make sure that you have a guide. So I said, okay. And is there anything in particular you want me to look at? He says, yes, you must see the yellow diamond. I said, fair. So I went to Salar Jang Museum. I got a guide. And I, I mean, so when you go to a museum, what is there? It's all relics of the past. What do you get from there? But this, this guide was for somebody that you could listen for hours on end. And then I gently reminded him about the yellow diamonds. So he took me to a place and he says, sir, what you see in front of you are the yellow diamonds. And, um, and he says, it's, it's the rarest of rare. You will not find it anywhere in the world. And I looked at this whole thing and I, I said, these are the most precious thing because they almost seem like just about some five or six yellow crystals that you will find on the road. Somebody has walked past. And he says, yes, these are the yellow diamonds. I don't know what happened, but I was lost in thought as I came home. And the passion with which you had the curator of the museum who also met with me, I just happened to, he seemed to be passing by and I met with him and I, and he spoke very lovingly about this. And as I was heading home, it just occurred to me, all of us are those yellow diamonds waiting to be discovered. All of us, let me repeat, all of us, there's a yellow diamonds waiting to be discovered. All it requires is a great dweller and a person with, with that special eye which can spot the talent. So that is on one end. So does it mean that I have to do nothing and then wait for somebody to discover me? No. And here there is a story about Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was born in 63. You may know him as one of the greatest food, uh, you know, basketball players in the world. And he was from the slums of Brooklyn, New York. He had four siblings. Father's earning was not anything to write about. But his father saw in Michael a person who was a lost soul. And he gave Michael, who was then about 13 years of age, he gave him a used piece of cloth and says, what do you think this out outfit could cost? So he says about a dollar. Father said, can you sell it for two dollars? If you can sell it for two dollars, it means that you would have really helped the family. So Michael nodded, I'll try, no guarantee, but I'll try. So he goes out, he washes the cloth clean and he didn't have an iron, so he smoothened the cloth and then put his mattress on top of it. The next day he took it out and then he took it to a crowded bazaar and he sold it for $2. He was very, very happy. Then every day after that, he looked for used clothes, looked at it, ironed it, washed it, and, and then he was able to make some money. Then his father again looked at him and says, hey, uh, how about this? How about selling something for $25? Now, $25 is a lot of money, but he didn't know what to do. So Michael again went back and when his father gave him a used T-shirt, all Michael did was he painted a picture of Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse, and then he went to a school where the children of the rich study. So he kept it outside and he said, hey, this is for all of $25 somebody purchased it. Now, $25 is a lot of money um, in that family. And then his father looked at him and gave him yet another piece of cloth. And he says, son, can you now sell it for $200? Now, $200 is, is a lot of money. I mean, if you're uh, if you translate that in Indian rupees, it is almost like 15,000 rupees. Now, how, how do you manage this? But this time, Jordan accepted this without the slightest doubt. Two months passed. He came to New York at a press conference. Um, he made his way and then he found uh, an actress called Farah Fawcett, who was then in a very, very famous movie called Charlie's Angels and then um, requested her to autograph that particular piece of cloth, that T-shirt, which Farah very happily did. 
And then immediately he waved it around and he says, well, is an auction. I'm going to auction this. He got $1,200 for that particular T-shirt. And much later, somebody asked him, OK, so this is your story, but what did you learn from this? He says, where there is a will, there is a way. And in anything that you do, you can add value to that. Much of whatever that Jordan did, he owed it to his father. Because all his father did was he just showed him the way. He, he says, there is a way in which you can increase your personal value. You will learn a lot when you are there at this institute. Dr. Kurian gave you a number of things, a worldview of what really happening is happening around. But from a personal standpoint, if you can add value to anything which is about, of the learning that you get at this wonderful institute, I can only say that each of you you would only even have to be that yellow diamond waiting to be picked. There would be people rushing to pick you up. So on this very happy note, I wish each of you the loudest success rings that you will ever hear in your life at the start. Thank you very much. Been a pleasure with all of you this morning. Thank you, sir, for your thought provoking deliberation. The one whose action encourage and motivate people to dream more is a true leader. And I feel extremely privileged to invite one such leader to address us. Our dear president, Professor Piswajit Patnaik. Please, sir. Thank you, Ditti. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Okay. The esteemed uh, chief guest, Mr. Nathan, a close friend, philosopher, and guide to us all the time, and uh, with a very killing smile. And uh, the uh, the our one of the best friends, uh, Albi, uh, Dr. Albi Kurian, then Professor Jason. Uh, we take pride for the collaboration which we have with the uh, University of Nottingham, Malaysia, and also with uh, MDIS, Singapore. Our students are lucky to get this kind of collaborative relationship and linkages. You know, the, uh, the chief guest, Mr. Nathan said about measure, about uh, uh, you know the lieutenant, and uh, he said that if anybody is speaking at the uh, you know third position, then you imagine my situation because I am at the end. Nevertheless, I think I must congratulate all the students and my faculty colleagues and the honorable vice chancellor of the university for welcoming a new batch to come in during this pandemic times. All of you are very lucky, especially I am referring to the students. In my days, there was no computer and if we want to have a book, it used to take months together. And today, you get everything on a plate. So you are really lucky. And this is the most exciting time, I agree with Albi, because this particular pandemic, has made us better professional and good human being. At least we have learned how to live alone, if need be so. Imagine if you have a patient in your family who has suffered with COVID, then you ask them their experience. They will tell you that what they have learned. They have learned 
to be confined in one single room and to live with hope for weeks together. And if you ask the children and the family members, they will tell you that whatever they have never done in the life, they could able to do during this particular period of time. So it's really a great learning experience for all of us. I have seen there is always a male chauvinism and the males they feel that cooking is not our cup of tea. But under pressure, now many males, those who are thinking in this life, I am not, I am not, they have started learning the things which they could have never could imagine that they can do it. So, in my opinion, this is a time wherein we have to keep our moral high and we have to leverage the opportunities which we have. Now, I just want to add one more story of a company. You know, you all of you are the service user of Netflix. And Netflix started in 1997 by two entrepreneurs, Mark and Reed. And you will be surprised when it started, it started as a company selling DVDs through their website. And today, this company has conquered the world and it has 15% of all the world's internet bandwidth. Not only that, it has 151 million paid subscribers in over 190 countries. What we learn from this? The moral of the story is that a small dream is small idea can give you fortune if you are committed and if you drive it with passion. My dear young friends, all of you are potential drivers of this economy. You are the future. And we never know. There may be several Deloitte created by many of you, which are much bigger than the existing companies world around. So my suggestion to all of you, I will not advise because I never believe in advising youngsters. I only suggest, my suggestion is number one, start dreaming big, but keeping your feet on the ground. Humility is very, very important. Many a times you don't creep, you don't keep your feet on the ground and start aspiring to things and never take serious initiative. And finally you blame your fate that I could not do this because my faith did not give me the support. I am a believer that nothing is fate. It is you who decides your destiny. It is you who creates your fate. There is no substitute to hard work, no substitute to the commitment and the love which drives you. Friends, each and every great thing starts with a small, humble beginning. Small is beautiful, but scaling it requires your efforts. The brightest example I can give you, the example of ASBAM University. With the support of my friends, and with the support of the stakeholders, a small idea 
that will create a diff institution with a difference. Started way back in 2006 and taken a journey and in 15 years, it has become a university, university of substance, but we have miles to go. It is just the beginning, I believe in that. And today, I don't have any opportunity to relax. I think I have more work to do, more efforts to put in, in comparison to when we were an institution. So why, why I told you this, that there is no question of relaxing in terms of taking a mission and driving it. While you are driving a mission, every day is a relaxing day if you love what you do. I think I'll be said so beautifully that I am a workaholic. You are not a workaholic. You love work. Therefore, you do what you love. Friends, you will never get what you love. It is better what you got, you should start loving it. That will give you the dividend and return. Now, all of us, we keep on saying to the youngest, youngsters, sky is the limit. What does it mean? It means that infinite. Now, sky, we tell in Hindi, akas, ananta the infinity. In Odia also, in vernacular, we say akas. And let me tell you, you need some kind of ingredients to make this sky is the limit. Now, I try to identify what are the ingredients, what are the attributes which will take you sky as the limit. A stands for attitude. I always believe that attitude is the beginning of everything. If you don't have right attitude, you cannot dream. If you cannot dream, you cannot achieve. So A stands for attitude. Another A stands for aspire. Hopes and ambitions towards achieving something in the life. And I read a very small book by Eric Fong, Hope. Please try to find out that book. It is very difficult to get it because it's a very old book. And it has explained that what is the meaning of hope and how important it is in the life to achieve something. Then K stands for knowledge which has no substitute. Again, A stands for authentic. You have to be authentic, confirming to acts and therefore worthy of belief. People should believe you. People should trust you. Next alphabet is A. A stands for agile. Moving quickly, agility is the biggest quality which is required by the leaders today. S stands for skill and H start for, stands for humility. So Akas, double A, K, double A, S, H. So if you want to make the sky is the limit, then you have to practice Akas and Akas is Anand. There is no end to it. Finally, before we end, I would like to tell all of you, which I think our Vice Chancellor also said at the beginning, even Jason also mentioned, friends, try to learn and practice expressing gratitude. Whatever you have got in the life, you should be thankful. Thankful to the nature which has provided you sufficient of oxygen 
now you must have realized how oxygen is expensive during this covid we never realized thankful to the nature the water the sunlight everything around you beautiful flowers birds thankful to the parents those who have provided you everything to become what you are today thankful your teachers those who have taught you in the school days and they have brought you to this level thankful to yourself that you have faced so much of ups and downs up till now so many challenges but you have made yourself stand tall gratitude has no substitute friends never try to creep try to take pride what you have this institution now you have a relationship it is like your parent it will be added to your biodata for the entire life and when you, you move out from this platform you will always remember this particular institute i wish you an exciting time at asbn thank you very much and i extend my sincere gratitude to three friends mr nathan albi and jason for sparing their valuable time and being with us this new university the newborn baby needs blessings of all of you thank you very much thanks a lot thank you sir for your words of wisdom we have come to the end of this inaugural ceremony my request now goes to professor saroj kumar bisai assistant dean academics to propose a vote of thanks please sir uh good afternoon everyone i take this opportunity to give the vote of thanks on the occasion of the inaugural ceremony of new batch 2021-22 of asbm university we are extremely grateful to our distinguished chief guest mr sb nathan partner and chief talent officer deloitte india for accepting our invitation for the occasion we are also obliged to professor jason pandya ur dean faculty of arts and social sciences university of nottingham and professor lb anand kurian professor mdis business school singapore for accepting our invitation and virtually connecting to us i extend my sincere thanks to professor biswajit patnaik honorable founder and president of asbm university for his unbounding spirit and encouragement to initiate new inventions for sustainable growth of the university i also place my thanks to our respected vice chancellor professor kalyan shankar re and pro vice chancellor professor falgu niranjana for their valuable guidance for making this event a success i am also thankful to the invited delegates registrar faculty members other staffs of the university for their presence to mark the occasion at last i thank our existing student as well as the freshers for their constant presence in this particular occasion to make it a great success thank you everyone thanks a lot i think i would like to request everybody just to switch on their ca camera to have a screenshot thank you thank you very much
Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Many thanks. Bye-bye.